From the News Channel 5 Network, this is Sportsline. Hey there, Sports on, on your television. Steve Labadier with you. Glad you are here with us on this Tuesday night on News Channel 5. Plus, coming off the Big Machine Music City Grand Prix, second edition of the race through the downtown Nashville streets. And once again, it was quite a show from the food and the fireworks to the fun around the music stages to the actual racing itself. It was just three days of excitement downtown once again. And I thought the race was better this year. Now, people are going to look at some of the numbers there, and they're going to see the fact that there were eight more crashes, and they're going to see the fact that there were eight yellow flags, and 36 laps were run under caution. They're going to say, oh, that's too much. It was sloppy again, and Nashville is just kind of a place that's like a demolition derby when they get there to do that street race. And there's some truth to that. This is a course that sets itself up to be messy. It's tricky. If you try to pass in certain spots, you run the risk of creating an accident. Restarts are a challenge on this road course. All of that is there and probably will be there as long as they continue to run the race. But I thought there was a major difference this year between what we saw last year. Last year, you had nine total stoppages. Two of them were red flag stoppages. It took forever to clean up the track. You had 33 laps run under caution, and a couple of the stoppages came when they hadn't even gotten back green yet. They went into the caution before they got green. That's how messed up the racing was last year. That didn't happen the same way this year. It was a different situation for the racing. I thought the racing itself, when they were in green, and yes, they ran 36 laps under caution, but when they were in green, I thought the racing was really exciting. I think it was hard on the leaders. I think guys were pushing them all the time. It wasn't clear last year when the guys were in the lead that they were very susceptible to being passed. That seemed different to me this year. I mean, right down to the bitter end, Scott McLaughlin nearly passed Scott Dixon in the final turn and then coming down that final straightaway in front of Nissan Stadium to the checkered flag. It was the fourth closest finish in a street course race in Indy car history. So it was exciting right down to the end. You had multiple different leaders in this year's race, including our buddy Joseph Newgarden, who led 12 laps before he had to pit during one of those cautions to get new tires. You had guys passing throughout. You had guys passing off of restarts. I think turn nine was a corner in which there was a lot of action. I think the changes they made to the course there and then a turn 10 and turn 11 made the racing much better. You saw passing there. You saw some crashes in turn 10 this year, which I think tells you the guys were a little bit more aggressive there. Getting the restart away from the finish line and back at the starting line was a huge adjustment for this race because they didn't have any messes as the green flag dropped to restart races. Guys got going and they got back into racing. So I think the adjustments they made to the course were really good. And I think the drivers walked away largely happy. Now, some of them that went out, uh, Takumo Sato, I know, tweeted that Nashville should be redubbed Crashville. Roman Grosjean was certainly upset about the way Joseph Newgarden shoved him into the wall as he tried to make that daring triple pass late in the race to move himself back up into position to have a chance. There are some guys who walked away from here thinking that the racing wasn't great and that this track had some issues moving forward. But I thought from year one to year two, which I think is where you'll see the biggest adjustments, what you wanted to have happen, happened. There was still some danger. There were still tricky parts. It was a very difficult track for the drivers. But having been on it last year, been in the simulator all year long, and coming back to Nashville for a second time, I think the drivers had a much better feel for the course and what they were trying to accomplish. I think the changes that the folks at the Big Machine Music City Grand Prix and IndyCar made were good for the course and good for racing. 
And ultimately, what you wanted is you wanted it to still be difficult, but for it to be more exciting than what you had last year. And they did that. They absolutely did that. Even the crashes were exciting. But the racing was back to what you hoped it would be. And ultimately, it's one of the all-time greats in IndyCar, Scott Dixon, that takes the checkered flag in that dramatic finish, coming off the restart with a lap and a half to go and able to hold off fellow Kiwi Scott McLaughlin for the win. It capped an incredible weekend for Dixon here in Nashville, a guy who is a six-time IndyCar champion. If he can win another series, which, by the way, moved up within six points of willpower into second place in the current port standings, he would tie the great A.J. Foyt for the most series championships all time with seven. Three races left in the season. He certainly has the opportunity to do that, as does Will Power, going for his second title. Marcus Erickson going for his first. And then, of course, Newgarden, who's a two-time champion, going for his third, now stands 22 points back. But Dixon, no question, he is one of the legendary racers in the history of IndyCar. And his career is not done at 41 years of age. He came to Nashville and won the exhibition pit stop challenge on Thursday night last week. Had a chance to catch up with him there. And he was so excited for his crew because IndyCar is a team sport. Yes, the driver gets a lot of the glory, but the guys who put them on the track and get them in and out of the pits share a lot of the responsibility to all of the success that a driver like Dixon has. So he was super excited for those guys to get the win in the pit stop challenge on Thursday night and said, hopefully it's a good omen because last year he won the pit stop challenge as well, but he only got second in the race. And it was kind of a struggle on Sunday. And he, he worked his way through all the chaos and the carnage of that inaugural race to get up to second and get on the podium. This time he wanted more and he fought himself all the way to the top to get a win. His 53rd career victory as an IndyCar driver, passing the great Mario Andretti for second most all time. Certainly a legendary career for Scott Dixon, and he added to his totals and his resume with the victory of the Big Machine Music City Grand Prix on Sunday. And afterwards, our John Burton caught up with him in Victory Circle. Well, Scott, as they say, it's not how you start, it's how you finish. This race didn't start on time because of weather. You started 14th. Yeah. How did you, one, get to the front of the pack, and two, hold off Scott McLaughlin at the end to win this race? Honestly, we had a great start. You know, I made our three or four spots on the start. The car was fast, but, you know, I think uh, ultimately today when we, we had a problem on one of the softs where the edge axe didn't work, so we went from about uh, 10th or 11th all the way back to the to the rear end, you know, of the field, and then we got uh, caught in an accident, took the rear, uh, part of the underwing off and damaged the car. The suspension was all bent. Mm. And then we just played it out. But uh, I think the, you know, the key for us was um, kind of the last stint there where we came in, just got fuel, didn't take tyres. We did 45 or 50 laps on a set of tyres, which is unheard of. You only meant to do about 20 or 30. And uh, it was wild with, uh, you know, racing with Scott at the end, McLaughlin, fellow Kiwi. So it was pretty cool to have a New Zealand one too. And uh, we, we got it, man. We just got it. It was a wild race and was just treating each corner as it came. We couldn't do anything else. We were so low on grip and just fighting it, but uh, it's so fun to win here in Nashville, man. Nine cautions last year, nine more this year. Oh. Is this race more a war of attrition than it is, you know, an actual, tr you know, strategic race? It's uh, it's it's wild, man. You're doing 190 miles per hour on these street street uh, roads, and and you know you're confined by brick walls, and it doesn't take one little thing to go wrong, and you're actually off and, and running into the fence or the tire barriers or anything like that. So, it's uh, extremely tricky to, to keep these cars on the track, but that's what makes it fun, you know. And uh, I think today, you know, we, we saw plenty. I didn't know it was nine cautions. It didn't feel as long as last year. I think we had a lot of red cautions or red flags, but um, man, we just love coming here, and we're so thankful to everybody here in Nashville for what they've done. And big machine, we got to keep making this race bigger and better man and it's uh, it's gonna be wild next year your second win of the year 53rd of your career you're now alone in second place and you're hot on the trail of Will Power now for this season's championship. Are you smelling another points title? I hope so. That's all <laughs> our team goes for, man. And, uh, you know, for us to, to get a seventh championship would tie the all-time great uh, AJ mm. Foyt. So we're, we're, we're smelling it. We'll have to keep after it and see what we can get. But, uh, you know, it's going to be tough. We've got three races to go, and we've got some, uh, some really tough competition. Scott, incredible race. Congratulations. Thanks, we'll see you on Broadway. First round's on me, my friend. Let's do it, man. Shots. <laughs> <laughs>
I would love to see those two on Broadway together. They would certainly tear it up, much like Dixon did the track on Sunday afternoon. Thanks so much to JB. And Scott Dixon, of course, with the 53rd win of his career, celebrating in victory circle with his Chip Ganassi racing team. It was also a celebration because the guy who was next to him on the podium, Scott McLaughlin, is a fellow Kiwi. Both those guys from New Zealand. Of course, Dixon, one of the all-time great drivers in the history of IndyCar. McLaughlin driving for Team Penske now. He was on the pole. He finished second. He certainly looks like an up-and-coming driver. But he's a long ways to go to catch up Dixon in terms of the annals and the resume. He had a great weekend here in Nashville, though, and shows that there is some promise to his career. And JB caught up with Scott McLaughlin as well. Scott, tough finish. Looked like you had the, the double in the bag. What happened uh, at the end of the race? Yeah, just, uh, yeah, Scott Dixon, he's, a, he's the greatest of all time, and he just knew where to place his car. You know, our Dixon and Gene race car was unreal, but um, just didn't quite have enough. I think if we had one more lap, we probably would have got past him there, but... Yeah, that's the that's what happens. This is what IndyCar's all about. But to get second today is a, is a great effort. Nine cautions last year. Nine more cautions this year. As you run this race, are you starting to learn? Is it more of a war of attrition than it is an actual strategic race? Yeah, I think I had with 25 to go. I was I think I was uh, 16th. So plus a lot of cars to get back to where we did, and, and to finish second was a, a real testament to my race car. You know, the Dex Imaging Chevy was just on point, and uh, really proud of everyone. And you know, this is great momentum for the rest of the season. The overall experience here in Nashville, the second race, uh, it seems like you drivers absolutely love coming here yeah. to this city, number one, and number two competing in this race. Yeah, oh, it's fantastic. There's not many vibes like it. I definitely put it in the top five in terms of you know, our vibes around the racetrack and the city, and, and everyone knows it's going on, and that's really cool to have as a race driver. So there's one weekend you're like a celebrity or a rock star, which is pretty cool, and it's nice to do it in Music City. Last one for me. Uh, you mentioned Scott being maybe the greatest of all time. He's now alone in second place with most wins, and you know he's in he's in line for maybe another points championship. I know you you're going to try to have something to do about that, but I mean, like, what can you say about this guy's career and what he's been able to accomplish in IndyCar? Oh, it's it is a testament to him and and how humble he still is. You know, he's achieved so much, a lot more than a lot of other people. And uh, you know, if I can ha have half of what he's done in my career, I'd be very proud. Um, but he's fl flown the Kiwi flag for a long time, and I'm trying to join him now and fly it myself so uh yeah i'm no, really proud to race him towards the end i've always wanted to do that and that was a lot of fun congratulations man we'll see you on broadway in a little bit <laughs> Scott McLaughlin, your runner-up in the Big Machine Music City Grand Prix for year number two. And I think you heard both Scott Dixon and Scott McLaughlin tell John Burton there that they loved it. They loved being around. I know those guys finished one and two, but they liked the style of racing that was out there. They liked how hard it was. They liked the challenge for drivers, and they loved the weekend. And that is the universal opinion, is whatever you think about the actual racing and what we saw on the course or on the streets over the course of the weekend the atmosphere downtown it felt like an event it was so much fun to be out there the action was everywhere there was a buzz in the air and there's just something special about this city when it throws a big event and these have been big events for indycar the last couple of years the indy 500 will always be the premier event always the last race of the season will always be looked forward to because it will crown an IndyCar champion. But when you think of every other race on the schedule, outside of those two, I don't know if there's a bigger one on the schedule right now than coming to Nashville because this city means so much to racing. It is such a great town to visit. And the scenes and the atmospheres of the last couple of years have simply been Incredible, And everybody's looking forward to year number three in early August next year. It'll be interesting what the long-term future is because the Big Machine Music City Grand Prix signed a three-year contract with IndyCar. So we know for sure it's coming back next year. There is two years' worth of options beyond that for IndyCar that they can exercise either one year or two years and keep it in the same spot on the schedule. 
The interesting thing when it comes to this race, though, is what is the future of the footprint over there by the football stadium? Obviously, there's a ton of talk and momentum to build a new Titan Stadium, which would be great for the city and hosting a lot of sporting events in the future, whether that be the Super Bowl or the College Football National Championship game or the Final Four, so many things that we have talked about in the past on this program. The one thing it would not be good for in the short term is the footprint over there because you have to build the stadium and the proposed spot for the new stadium is right where all of the haulers and pit row is right now you start to build right there it becomes very difficult to use that spot you can't really switch and make the old stadium the parking lot and that staging ground just yet because you're going to have to have the old stadium standing for some time you would think so can there be a temporary track worked out that works and is suitable for everybody in the meantime during that construction? Would there be a pause in the race? What is the long-term future? Those are questions that will be asked now, I think leading up into next year's race and then beyond that for what IndyCar wants to do, what the city is able to do, what race organizers are capable of doing given that restriction and given that conflict, if you will, in terms of the grounds and in terms of scheduling and in terms of this city and what is next. We'll find how, how it goes, but at least for now, the Music City Grand Prix has definitely cemented itself as part of the IndyCar calendar and a place that drivers most certainly want to come and do their best to win at. We'll take a break. When we come back, we will get into Titans training camp. We look forward to Thursday night, the preseason opener against the Ravens when we return. This is Sports Live on News Channel 5 Plus.